Hi, and welcome to another segment of the Sequoia Spotlight. I'm your host, Kamal Fisher. And with me, I have Ella Smith, chairman and founder and CEO of American Cannabis Company with the OTC ticker AMMJ. Ellis, welcome. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Very excited to have you and hear more about what this company does. Um, you know, we've seen on the website that you wrote, redefining society's relationship with cannabis through what you call responsible stewardship. So tell us more about the company and how you guys plan on, you know, working your way through the strategies to get that done. Absolutely. So we are a full service consulting firm for the last 10 years. We've supported clients all across the U.S., Canada, and different parts of the global market from South America, Europe, and Asia. Uh, we also run a soil manufacturing company uh, that is seeing tremendous growth this year and next year. And we also own three dispensaries and a cultivation facility in Colorado Springs, where we really are proud to be one out of four operators of 1,300 that are actually clean green certified, meaning we're 100% organic standards. And that is the way our whole business culture is built around that mindset of organic mindsets around cannabis, uh, being sustainable to the environment, and really looking at our business through what we call a triple bottom line, people, planet, and profits. And so that's kind of who we are. Excellent. Um, what are the main focus areas for um, ACC, American Cannabis Company? And also, what are your main products and services that you offer? From a consulting standpoint, we have built over two and a half million square foot of growth space to date. So I'm very proud of the time and effort that has gone into really taking people's concepts and ideas, Good. putting them on paper, designing it out, uh, making sure we have the financial models and the financial um, wherewithal to be able to accomplish these businesses. We help them design and build them. We help them hire, train, and staff and get these businesses operational. And that's really our core competency. This is where over the last 10 years, we've really kind of stood out in the industry and really defined who we are. Along with the consulting, though, that leads into that kind of work is the application work. And we do quite a bit of application work and new markets are coming online. For instance, I'm in Alabama right now writing an application. We're in, in Florida. We just did them in Mississippi. And so that really what opens the door for a lot of our clients on the consulting side is supporting them with their ideas and concepts. I always say I'm a dream maker or a dream crusher. My goal is to take people's ideas and concepts and really shave away a lot of the heavy weight that they think they need in their business and get it down to a refined process procedure type business. And so that's what we do for, from a consulting standpoint. That's the main bulk of our business. Uh, under the American Cannabis or under the American Cannabis Company umbrella, that soil manufacturing company is really uh, what's taking a lot of our energy this year. We've seen tremendous growth from our sales team getting us now with larger distributors. And this is really seeing that growth exponentially grow three and four times compared to what we've seen in the past. And so this is really setting us up for increasing that revenue quite a bit going into next year and the following year. As we know, this product is kind of that annuity for us, meaning people are going to buy it and they're going to come back monthly to continue to purchase this product. And so we really are putting a lot of focus into that. And then uh, we made the, made the acquisition uh, about 18 months ago of three dispensaries and a cultivation facility. And we put about $700,000 into infrastructure upgrades into the cultivation facility, as well as some infrastructure upgrades to a uh, few of the dispensaries. And so very proud to kind of now have a consistent look and feel with our dispensaries, being able to put out clean, green certified cannabis through that, uh, through our, our, our cultivation facility. And uh, that's really our main focus with that brand is to really differentiate by putting out organic cannabis and making that be front and center for our business model and our core culture. Wonderful. Sounds like all the right mix of elements are in that little pot um, to make a successful business. How do you overcome challenges? And firstly, what are they? What, what challenges do you face? Well, it, so with, with extreme growth that we have seen uh, with our soil manufacturing, we've got quite a bit of purchase orders and we're in a unique position of having to really ramp up our production than what we've done before in the past. And so I can't go to traditional banks and get um, loans on purchase orders. And so I'm having to get creative on going out to, to raising capital to support these POs so that I can manage this next growth in the company's um, kind of acceleration here. And so that's one of the main problems I'm experiencing right now is I'm trying to manage this new growth in this company and just being able to get the resources so I can handle that growth with, with what I'm seeing happening. And so that's one of the main challenges I see right now. Accessing okay. capital, for sure. For sure. Yeah. With inflation uh, being high most recently and everything going on geopolitically, how does that affect not only your company, but the, the industry in general? 
Absolutely. When we're seeing inflation like it is, and you know, we're not in a recession, but we're not far off from it. All those telltale signs are there. Um, we're seeing a lot of people be more conscious of their spending. You know, from a retail perspective, we're seeing retail sales are down a little bit. Um, we're seeing that uh, these consumers are feeling the pinch and they're being more conscious on where their spending is going. Uh, and we're seeing a, a lot of the investors who are getting into the cannabis space, they're being a little bit more hesitant on how they're spending their money uh, and ensuring that where they do put their their investments make make the most sense for them because we are in a unique place right now in the economy. And so we are seeing some some inconsistencies that we've seen in the past, that's for sure. Now, I know that in California, there's uh, the notion that uh, cultivators are you know, growing way more cannabis than they can actually sell at this point. Obviously, the federal regulation prohibiting, you know, the sale cross state, et cetera. Are you experiencing a similar issue? And then how do you help companies with your consulting services to actually overcome those supply chain issues, so to speak? Absolutely. So the, the whole supply chain game is very competitive. You know, in Colorado specifically, we are the oldest market and there's still a heavy black market here to compete with. They did a pretty poor job of balancing out the number of licenses awarded in the state. And so you kind of see what we call Proptober we're dealing with right now, where all this outdoor cannabis was harvested, really puts a dent in our price points right now as we see that price, fl price fluctuation drop. Um, and the goal is for me as a consultant is to understand how do you still survive and be sustainable in this marketplace, whether it's my own business, because I deal with it personally, but also for customers that reach out and say, help me, I'm in Oklahoma, how do I compete here? And this is where it's really understanding what are your cost of goods? Do you understand what it costs you to grow a gram or a pound of cannabis? 99% of cultivators I meet can't do that. And so first and foremost, helping them get process procedure in place to understand what that is. Then knowing what their ceiling needs to be to produce under so that they can still have a margin and be successful. And that is coming in and setting up new standards, new SOPs, um, understanding new genetics that we may want to grow that will grow more per square foot versus some of these boutique strains that they want to grow that grow less per square foot. And looking at their model to ensure that they they understand where they can make specific decisions that can improve their business model or ones that are really hurting their business. And so it's really looking at people, processes, and all the way down to genetics and how you're performing from a grams per square foot production. And then from a retail perspective. Are you using technology to your advantage? Are you using these things to really target your demographic and your customer base through text messages, through email blasts, through other means that we know we can target them versus just, just having a, a, a billboard or a flag out front waving and saying, hey, come, come, come see me. And so just making sure that there is some form of, ta of tech stack that they can really rely on that is giving them an ability to target a, a broader reach of their demographics. And so there's a many things that we're doing to really help people refine their business models. And a lot of it boils down to people and leadership within those roles and make sure those are the right people. Correct. Correct. Uh, the business leaders are really pivotal, pivotal in those um, making those decisions. Correct. So uh, what, what, what about the alliance with core cannabis? Can you shed some light on that? Okay. Very grateful to be able to work with core cannabis. Um, Super exciting group, very sophisticated pharmaceutical group that's coming into cannabis and really bringing some unique technologies to the space uh, to really kind of change the current status quo that we've seen in the industry. Um, we're building a very large high tech facility for them that I've been very integral in. They're going to be using a lot of our, our, uh, our processes and standards around growing from our soil that we use. They're going to be 100% organic. Um, that they are really trying to stand out in the marketplace and really tell a different story. And I'm super excited to be part of that story um, as they are really doing things outside the box, which is very hard to do in our industry. And so we've got a lot of stuff uh, that we've got planned for next year with them in Florida and Alabama. They're a partner of ours in Alabama applying for an application. We'll probably work in Mississippi with them as well as the main principal. And one of their other principals is from Mississippi. My family is all from Mississippi. So we all share that company. We all share that commonality. And so, yeah, they're an amazing group to work with. I just spent the last three days with them in Vegas and in Arizona and um, just super, super exciting to be around them and be around their leader. He's an amazing guy. And it's cool to see the groundbreaking stuff we're doing with them and really trying to change the narrative of the status quo in cannabis. So keep an eye out for these guys. They're doing stuff so far different than everybody else. Look forward to seeing more. Um you speak about the soil and uh, the word organic, I feel, gets, you know, floated around 
sometimes quite unconsciously. Um, how do you maintain the integrity of the soil? I think that's where all things really start, right? From from soil to product. How do we that's maintain? Right. So I'm a tree hugging hippie first and foremost, and I'm very proud to wave that flag. And it's a core value of mine for the last 25 years. And I bring that with everywhere I go in life, whether it's how I feed myself in general, I hunt because I want to make sure the food that I kill is clean and safe and healthy for me to consume. I grow vegetables in the summer so I can consume that. Why wouldn't your can of cannabis be treated the same way as your food consumption? And that blows my mind that a lot of people don't understand the importance of why we should be consuming organic cannabis. There's a lot of autoimmune diseases, certain cancers can be highly impacted on your health if you consume certain pesticides that are allowed to be sprayed that we don't spray in organics, certain chemicals and fertilizers used to grow these, these, these flowers and these then to make these edibles and things can be very harmful to folks' health that have these issues. And so it's very front and center to really look at, we use this plant from a wellness perspective, whether people think they're using it recreationally or not, it is a wellness, a wellness product. And folks who really do consume it from a medical standpoint, we want to give them the best chance to ensure that they are getting the value from the plant that they need versus putting something on that plant that can cause harmful things to happen to them and just really cleaning up that whole rhetoric and story and saying this is really the, the way it should be done because this is health and wellness. And we want to look at it from it from that sole perspective is how we can really achieve this, limiting our pesticide use. Um, but for us, it is that foundation of that soil. Um, and it really drives the whole narrative beyond that. Great stuff. Um, can we touch a little bit on the stock itself of AMMJ, the OTC ticker uh, there? Uh, what can you give us in terms of revenue, anything forecasted? Just shed some light on the actual stock and, and what investors can look forward to. Sure. So, um, you know, the, the the stock has been taking a beating over the last, call it seven or eight months. We've seen it drop down to four cents. Um, and it's our our goal to turn that around. Um, we've done a significant amount of revenue this year. We're about to file our Q3 here this week. Uh, and you guys will see kind of where we are, the revenue this year. I can't speak too much on that, but you've seen we've probably tripled, if not quadrupled, our, our revenue from last year already that you can see. And we're super excited for that extreme growth. And it's us now really uh, managing this growth going into next year. As we're seeing our soil, as I said, that is picking up tremendous um, kind of traction and getting into some new relationships with distributors with distributors, opening up a now manufacturing plant on the West Coast to service California and Washington and Oregon. And so we know that we're on the right trajectory. You guys are seeing, um, since I've taken the company over, I'm the CEO now, um, it's been a big learning curve for me to step into this into this seat. I'm just now kind of getting situated and feeling really good where I am and kind of understanding kind of how, how to drive this company now that I'm in the hot seat. And uh, stay tuned, we've got a lot of exciting things happening. And as you'll see, we raised the needle this year with revenue, uh, and we continue to we will continue to see that growth next year. We've got a lot of great things happening, uh, and it'll continue to kind of grow like you saw this year. And so we're on a great trajectory. Stay tuned as we are continue to put money in the bank and increase that revenue. Well, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> for yeah. the way of saying that, Ella Smith, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Carmel Fisher. You're watching the Sequoia Spotlight. And we've just had a conversation with American Cannabis Company on the OTC markets, AMMJ. Thank you.